So thank you, Charles, and thank you, uh, Tax Justice Network, and everyone here uh, for having me here. So uh, I'm Kumi Kozuda, a PhD student from Japan, and my research uh, I'm presenting is to explore the role of Keidanden, uh, that is the biggest uh, business group in Japan, and, and the role on the uh, negotiation process of the OECD's BEPS project. And my, the starting point of my research question is the general recognition of the Japanese uh, less motivated to aggressive tax planning. Uh, believe it or not, there are those recognition even in among Japanese business. So nevertheless, uh, the lobby by Japanese business was indeed aggressive. And their most concern was on, expressed on the country by country reporting, CBCR. And it is CBCR, as you all know, is the idea for further tax transparency to unveil suspicious, harmful uh, tax avoidance activities. To this idea, it is well known that uh, the business groups and accountancy firms across the world are uh, strongly opposed and so did Japanese business. Why? So this research uh, investigates why and how Japanese business, uh, which uh, perceived less motivated to aggressive tax planning, uh, intensively uh, involved in the BEPS negotiations. And this analytical approach has some limitations such that uh, it cannot verify to what extent Japanese business uh, successfully affected to the process, but at least this research will contribute to unveil how Japan and Japanese business, uh, which tends to be neglected in research on international tax avoidance, uh, played and performed in the policy process of the BEPS and what their interests and concerns are. So here is uh, the research design given in my full paper. Uh, due to the limitation of time, I will focus on the latter half underlined here. Uh, okay, too many animations. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so, in the Kdanlens lobby formation, uh, their think tank uh, called the 21st Century Public Policy Institute played a central role. And there are several aspects, but the most noteworthy part must be its constituents members uh, of the research group on international taxation uh, established within the think tank. And the members were not only from multinationals affiliated to Kdanlen, uh, but also from big four accountancy firms and from universities, mainly professors of tax law. Uh, their research directory contributed to construct Kaidan Lens opinions, and uh, it appeared uh, anywhere, anywhere else uh, in Kaidan Lens' dis stance, such as their comments to the draft, dra draft discussion papers of the BEPS project. So, business groups and accounting firms strongly opposed to the CBCR generally because of the costs and the risks to disclose their confidential information, and Japanese multinationals were basically being in line with it. But additionally, there was another concern, slightly different uh, from other Western counterparts. That is, uh, the issues related in emerging market, uh, more specifically in China, where Japanese companies are more based in than Western companies. And there are mainly two fears within their concern. One is the fear of double taxation uh, by foreign subsidiaries, uh, sorry, by foreign authority. And the other is the, mi the misuse of the in confidential information by foreign subsidiaries. So it means that they distrust not only foreign authority, but also their colleague in foreign subsidiaries. And this is why Kay Downland uh, said the CBCR as 
their prior issues of lobby. It is because they thought uh, that this type of concerns is not necessarily represented by Western business. That is why they decided to lobby by themselves. And Kay Dunlan's fundamental stance on the CBCR is simply enough that is unnecessary. Uh, this statement was perhaps the strongest opposition uh, to the CBCR among other business groups. Uh, meanwhile, Kay Dunlan also gave uh, some proposals if they said it were to be unavoidable. Firstly, that the mechanism to exchange CBCR should be under tax treaties. And secondly, that the range of exchange information uh, of the data of CBCR, I mean, uh, should be limited. As a result, as you all know, these opinions were partly reflected into the result, final result of the BEPS. Uh, it is indeed successfully for the business, but disappointingly for the tax justice campaigners. And as for the Cajun Lens uh, lobbying strategies, it can be characterized in two ways. It's international and domestic rules. At international level, the way was on direct inputs to the CFA, as well as on indirect lobbying uh, by exchanging views with BIAC and the OECD's CTPA by establishing New, dialogue, new annual dialogue with Pascal Santamans. And at national level, Cajun and its think tank regularly had meetings with officials of ministries. But this domestic approach uh, also had an aspect of international lobby since Japan was deeply positioned in the negotiation of the BEPS project as a chair of the OECD's CFA. Uh, who is who was he? And he was Masatsuga Sakawa, the Vice Minister of Finance uh, for International Affairs of Ministry of Finance of Japan, had been inaugurated the chair from the very establishing period to the final report of the BEPS project. And he testified in a, an interview. Uh, that is published in Japanese, uh, that the almost all of basic lines, directions of the BEPS project was agreed at the very first uh, meeting with the other bureau members in October 2011. It was four months before uh, that Pascal Santamans was being in office of the CTP CTPA. So in that sense, uh, Santa Mans is always highlighted as the champion of the BEPS project. And it is true, uh, but it is also true that the basic line of the project had been already determined by, by the bureau members before he came in. Under the Japanese chairmanship, uh, the Keidanlen took some advantages. One is that Keidanlen was able to get a latest information of the project uh, in a timely manner because many Japanese officials uh, joined the working parties under the CFA in order to support their boss, Asakawa. And the other aspect which might affect stakeholders' lobby was the reform of the decision-making at the CFA led by Japan and the other bureau members this story on the reform is well described by Asakawa himself uh, in, in, uh, in several interviews published in Japan. And that is from the bottom-up approach, which the CFA endorses the discussion results uh, raised by each working groups, to the top-down approach, which the Bureau instructs each working group to discuss specific issue. So this reform had several implications. Uh, one is that the draft discussion papers were open uh, in public, even remaining disagreements among bureau, uh, bureau press members. Uh, it is in order to uh, accelerate the speed of the negotiation process 
and consequently to accomplish the project until the deadline set by the Bureau uh, until during the Asakawa's terms. And this newly top-down approach, I think, uh, offered stakeholders more lobbying opportunities, thereby allowing them to lead the, the contested uh, discussions up to their favorable directions through lobbying to each national government. Of course, this consequence is not special to K Danlen, but widely relevant to all stakeholders. Uh, but in Japanese context, there is no such powerful lobbyist or civil organizations uh, to involve effectively to the process. So Kei Danlen enjoy the opportunities that enable them to involve in the process effectively. So in sum, all of the approaches of Kei Danlen's business lobby can be shown as this diagram. Whereas Kei Danlen took direct approach uh, to the OECD by submitting comments and so on, many other approaches of their lobby go through domestic paths. To conclude, this research explores that Kei Danlen, a business lobby that is motivated not necessarily for aggressive tax planning, but motivated for avoiding unreasonable double taxation, acted as an enabler that made the rule for further tax transparency water down. So we may call their role as indirect or unintended enabler. Uh, it, will further, uh, it will need further analysis whether and how interest of K. Danlen for avoiding unreasonable taxing uh, can be resolved. However, it may be worthwhile to think to separate the motivations uh, of that uh, the less aggressive from more aggressive ones in tax planning, because at least the former, the less aggressive tax planner, has been forced to be in disadvantageous international tax competitive market. So in this sense, the less aggressive tax planner, sorry, uh, find by themselves the more transparency, the more useful for their global business, because their concern for unreasonable double taxation can be resolved by CBCR, or more specifically by public CBCR. So, another point is, taking Japanese context, the Kei Danlen is the only non-state actor in Japan which actively involved in the process of the BEPS project. So to this business body, and putting together with the efforts of Japanese officials, uh, it is sometimes evaluated in Japan that the BEPS project had been widely supported by all Japan effort. However, this all Japan effort is not all at all. <laughs> because there are less diversified uh, lobbying, act, I mean, less diversified stakeholders involved, notably Japanese labor or civil society organization, were absent in the negotiation process. So in other words, uh, Japanese business could be more influential uh, because of the silence of the civil society. So this less public awareness is partly derived uh, from the gender recognition among citizens, not Japanese, uh, less aggressive uh, to tax planning. In this context, I think a Japanese civil society, and especially uh, the Tax Justice Network Japan, uh, established in 2070, 17, is expected to play a leading role uh, for a campaign as well as for further research on the behaviors of Japanese multinationals. There is a long way to go, I believe, but there must be a lot of cultural or societal barriers, but uh, civic involvement can be a game changer. Thank you very much for your attention.